Hello everybody. The title of my conference paper is Social Robots, a Bridge Between the Two Cultures. In a famous lecture held in Cambridge in 1959, Charles Noe introduced an expression which is still used today to stress the divide between the natural sciences and the humanities, namely the two cultures. Snow emphasized a problem of incommunicability between different types of learning citizens which affect modern industrial societies. On the one hand, there are intellectuals, experts in the humanities, literary persons who read and write books. They are mostly interested in the psychological, moral or social aspects of life. For them, novels, history, poetry, plays are like bread and butter. But they completely ignore physics, biology and engineering. They are natural Luddites. On the other hand, there are natural scientists and engineers that are experts in the pure and applied sciences. They feel at home in what Snow calls the industrious society of electronics, atomic energy and automation. However, they are hyper-specialized and therefore almost completely ignorant of traditional culture and the humanities. According to Snow, they do not read books, they are in a sense illiterate. Both tribes are formed by very intelligent persons, who are anyway incapable of understanding each other. Snow recognized that, at least potentially, the social sciences are the third culture, which can fill the gap between the two cultures. And they give some examples of social scientists studying industrial society. Still, the social sciences are more often seen by physicists and engineers as closer to the humanities than to the natural or technical sciences. In other words, we still have two cultures around that find it difficult to integrate and comprehend each other. Active and fruitful collaboration between the two cultures is possible, in my honest view, my honest opinion. But by effective collaboration, I mean specialists of the humanities and the social sciences working side by side with experts of the natural sciences and engineering on the same project, not just studying from the outside the industrial society. One of the fields in which effective collaboration is possible is social robotics. As Corinna Lathan and Geoffrey Ling wrote in a popular science magazine, like most robots, social robots use artificial intelligence to decide how to act on information received through cameras and other sensors. Social robots need to acquire the ability to respond in ways that seem lifelike, and this is possible only if designers have the necessary knowledge on how perceptions form, what constitutes social and emotional intelligence, and how people can deduce other thoughts and feelings. So, this research, my research, aims to show to which extent we are already moving in this direction. So, this is a research in the field of scientometrics or trend analysis. We want. Here, I intend to investigate the following cultural phenomena. First, the emergence of the term and concept social robots, which is a typical problem of the history of ideas. Second, the relative and absolute frequency of the term social robots in the scientific literature. Third, the distribution of the absolute frequencies of scientific publications, including the term social robots, in the 21st century. Fourth, the state of proximity of two couples of terms, such as social robots plus sociology and social robots plus social work. And here, by state of proximity, I mean the compresence or togetherness of the two terms in the same publication. Fifth, the theoretical or instrumental relations between, respectively, the term social robots and sociology and the term social robots and social work. 
which are the methods I use to implement my research. To determine the emergence of the concept and the frequency of the term social robots in the period 1800-2008, I used a combination of Engram viewer search and hand search. First, I detected the peak of the relative frequency by using the scientometric online tool offered by Google. Then, I determined the absolute frequency by means of hand calculation, but it is a very simple formula. The distribution of the absolute frequency of the publications, including the term social robots, have been detected by collecting data in Google Scholar. Graphs have been built by entering data into Excel. So the same technique has been adopted to determine the state of proximity. Finally, to reconstruct the possible theoretical or instrumental relations between the different terms and concepts, I lab quantitative analysis and venture into qualitative analysis. So given the large number of items detected, I focused only on a few exemplary cases, chosen on the basis of the criterion of their influence, which indicator is the number of citations and novel points. So, which are the results, the finding and the discussion? So, graph number one provides the relative frequency of the term social robots and information about its emergence in the history of ideas. As one can see, this term and concept emerged rather recently in the scientific literature. One can find sporadic early uses of the term social robots in the first half of the 20th century. However, initially, the expression was not used with his current meaning. For some time, the expression social robots was used metaphorically. It referred to human beings working in factories or offices in a very routinary way or to individuals that uncritically obey to their leaders or adhere to the dominant lifestyle of society, as they were tools of machine. An example is 1952 book Process versus Power, Studies in Modern Culture by Eugene Newton Anderson, where experts are defined as social robots willing to serve any master. So we need to wait until 1974 to see the term social robot used in his current meaning. We find it in a booklet entitled Homo Cyberneticus Artificial Psychology and Generative Microsociology, authored by Hans Jürgen Holstein and Leonard Stahlberg. So here the expression social robot is eventually used to indicate a specific type of machine and not of humans. So we try, this is a quote from the book, we try to computer simulate the behavior of artificially intelligent social robots, which, as side effects of their cognitive information processing or belief system handling, generate emotions and attitudes. So Holstein and Stahlberg write about social robot as a possibility by taking a futuristic perspective. So it is worth, worth reporting also an example from recent literature where social robots are discussed as a reality. And here I may mention a 2009 book uh, entitled Moral Machines Teaching Robots Right from Wrong by Wendell Wallach and Colin Allen. Here the authors write roboticists, for example Hiroshi Ishiguro at Osaka University, are experimenting with social robots that have access to information a human, a human might not have. A second important aspect revealed by graph number one is that since the emergence of the term, its use enjoys a rapid and steady growth. So quite significantly, the peak of the relative frequency is located in 2008, 
which is the last year covered by Engram viewer. It is interesting at this point to determine the absolute frequency of the term, at least in the year of its momentum. So this calculation must be done by hand. We can see in Engram viewer that in 2008 the relative frequency amounts to 0.0000003649%. 60 under the point. Google makes raw data available to all Engram corpora online. In particular, we are interested in the total counts for the English corpus. And here you can see how it looks like. We need to find our line. Our line is 2008. It is the following one. How can we read this line? So this means that in 2008, approximately 200,000 books in English were published. They contain more or less 100 million pages and almost 20 billion words. So with a simple formula, we can calculate the absolute frequency of the term social robots. As you can see, the number is 71. At this point, we need to extract data from a different and more inclusive database, naming Google Scholar, because Engram Viewer does not cover the period 2009-2019. Besides, we are now interested in the frequency of the publications, including the terms, and not just the terms. 71, as you can see, is not a big number, so we need to know what happened after. As one can see in graph 2, in the last two decades, the annual distribution of scientific publications, including the term social robots, takes the form of continuous growth. Here, I provide just one example. The article, Assistive Social Robots in Elderly Care, a review, that's the title, which appeared in the journal Geronto Technology. It, it is exemplary of influential research. Indeed, up to now, this article, written by Josh Brokens, Marcel Henrik and Hank Rosendahl, has been quoted in at least 663 scientific works. This number, of, of course, keeps growing. The authors focus on assistive social robots, which are, this is a quote, a particular type of assisted robotics design for social interaction with humans. They maintain that such robots could play an important role with respect to health and psychological well-being of elderly. In particular, they could provide companionship. In graph 3, we can see the distribution of scientific publications, including both the term social robots and sociology. It gives us an idea of the state of proximity between the two cultures, one represented by social robotics and the other by social science. As one can see, once again, the trend is very clear. More and more publications concern both robotics and sociology. This does not mean that all this research is directly focusing on possible or actual synergies between the two disciplines. Some articles mention one of the two concepts or both in a very superficial way. However, the number of publications is rather large and gives an idea of the trend. Just one example. An influential work is um, Shanyang Zhao's article Humanoid Social Robots as a Medium of Communication, which appeared in the journal New Media and Society in 2006 and has been quoted 136 times. Zhao points out that humanoid social robots belong to a special type of robotic technology used for communicating and interacting with humans. 
He adds that these robots are autonomous, interactive, and human-like, and they can be either mechanical or, this is interesting, digital entities. The conclusion of the author is sociological in character, as he underlines that the incorporation of such robotic entities into the realm of social life invariably alters the condition as well as the dynamics of human interaction, giving rise to a synthetic society in which humans commingle with humanoids. Finally, graph number four, focuses on the state of proximity between the terms social robots and social work. Social work is a scientific discipline and practice which is strictly related to sociology. Here, the numbers at our disposal are limited. This is quite surprising as social robotics can more easily find a pattern of collaboration with applied sociology than with theoretical sociology. Still, the trend is encouraging. The absolute frequency, including both terms, keep growing by following a pattern that seems almost exponential. Concerning examples of articles exploring this possibility, I'll mention the rise of social robots, which is my own article, and appeared in the Journal of Evolution and Technology in 2016. So the first section of the article is entitled Social Robots and Social Work. The work is addressed to engineers interested in cooperating with sociologists and to sociologists interested in the social dimensions of robotics. So the former are invited to get acquainted with the problems of social work and other social services while the latter to have a closer look to at technical aspects of new generation robots. The conclusion is that as robots become more and more sophisticated, engineers will need the help of trained sociologists and psychologists in order to create personas and scenarios and to teach humanoids how to behave in various circumstances. The article mainly focuses on human-computer interaction and human-robot interaction. And by now, it has been cited 38 times. By, and the interesting thing is that it was quoted by both sociologists and engineers. So here are the conclusions. So the quantitative analysis presented in this article shows rather unambiguously that there is a growing interest in sociological aspects of social robotics as in social robotics per se. It seems that the next big thing in the field of robotic technologies will be machines capable of interacting with humans in a very sophisticated way and working either in the field of services or performing the role of companions in everyday life. The trend we found in scientific literature is confirmed by the trend in the manufacturing. Service robots is a wider concept than social robots, as it includes also intelligent vacuum cleaners or drones. In other words, the concept is designed to include all known industrial robots. Still, Social robots used for social work purposes are included in the figure of medical robotics. And in this field, as in all other fields of robotics, the number of items keep growing as the data provided by the International Federation of Robotics shows. So our qualitative analysis showed that there are different ways to deal with social robotics from a sociological point of view. Here I briefly summarize a few of these ways. First of all, a team of sociologists and engineers can observe, analyze, describe the interaction between humans and social robots and check the quality and the effectiveness of this interaction. Here, some research techniques typically implemented in sociological research, such as questionnaires, participant observation, focused interview, and so on, could be useful. 
Not all these research techniques can be implemented, as it is difficult, for instance, to collect information from people affected by dementia or from very young children. Sometimes social robots are designed to work with these categories of people. However, even observation and interpretation through the lens of sociological theory could be helpful. Engineers may, may be not acquainted with symbolic interactionism or ethnomethodology, but most sociologists certainly are. In turn, the knowledge acquired from a sociological perspective can be applied by engineers and programmers to improve their machines. So sociologists can also study the process of robotization from the outside, that is by assuming a macro-sociological perspective and try to figure out how our society will change when legions of social robots will populate our homes, streets and workplaces. In this case, however, it would be useful for social scientists to learn more about robotics from a technical point of view. This can be done with the help of engineers by resorting to expert interviews. In any case, the development of a real dialogue and effective collaboration between the two cultures, and in particular between robotics and sociology, cannot be further postponed. And this is my conclusion, and this is also a hope. So, thank you for your attention. I hope that this was interesting for you. Bye.